Alright guys, welcome to RC Mojo. This week we're going to be putting all the modular bits of the XR311 together and making a rolling chassis. Straight in at step 14, fitting the front assembly. We'll need some plastic bits to make up the preload widgets, a couple of the torsion bars. These are steel and you get a few spares too. Should last a lot longer than the plastic ones the original kit came with. A couple of little springs, the well-named plate nuts, four M3 screws and four split washers. The front assembly just slides into the front of the chassis, simple enough, but we need to fit the torsion bars too. The inner and outer plastic bits slide together with a small spring. They then slot into the mounts in the chassis and it's probably worth making sure the slots in the ends are vertical so it's easier to get everything aligned. The bars are a fairly loose fit which makes it that bit trickier to line everything up. Hold the arms level and try and get the torsion bars to insert. It's a little bit of a fiddle. The best bit though, once they're all in we need to try and hold it all together while we install those nut plates. If you flip it over it's fairly stable sat on a flat surface. Pop one of the screws with a split washer under the head through the chassis and loosely fit the nut plate. Fit the other screw loosely as well and do the same on the other side. Now do them up nice and tight. Keeping them loose gives us a little bit of wiggle room to get everything nicely lined up. If you just do them up tight you might find the screws don't line up with the nut plates. Step 15, which is remarkably similar to 14. We need the same set of parts. The preload widgets are exactly the same and fit to the chassis just like the front ones. The torsion bars go in the same way too. The rear assembly slides on, the screws go in and the nut plates just as you might expect. Done! Step 16, the wheels. We'll need the tyres. They look a lot like the ones on the real truck, which is very nice. There's the two parts trees with the parts for the wheels. There's three parts per wheel, the two outside bits and the centre section. Fitting it all together is a bit of a pain. On the centre section on one of the sides there's a notch. Use it to hook the tyre bead and press it into the tyre. Get it about halfway, then use a screwdriver, being extremely careful not to damage the rubber, to pull the rest of the bead over the centre section. If it doesn't flip around by itself, turn the plastic until it sits neatly inside the tyre. I found once I'd finished the fourth one, I just about got the hang of it. Perfect. There's nothing to hold the outside bits on yet, so that's going to come next. Step 17, and this is where the chassis becomes a roller. This time we will be needing M3 screws, some split washers, antenna mount, a rather large amount of M2 screws to mount up the wheels, and the rear body mount. The mount sits over the motor and lines up with the holes in the chassis. Two of the M3 screws and split washers mount it to the chassis. They want to be nice and tight, but watch out as they're threading into aluminium. The antenna mount mounts to the other hole next to the body mount with another M3 screw and split washer to hold it on. To nip it up, you can slot an allen key into the mount and tighten up the screw. Next, the wheels. These are a little bit of a fiddle. The deeper dish side of the wheel goes to the hub. Insert a screw and line up the three wheel parts. Line it up with one of the hubs and loosely fit the screw. Install the rest going from one side to the other, all loosely initially, then do them up a bit at a time until they're all done up. One thing to watch out for though, if you do them up really tight, it's going to distort the outer parts of the wheel. They could maybe do with a shim between the centre section and the outer bits to take up the slack, but we'll see how it goes. Now, as we've got it on its wheels, we might as well roughly set up the preload, just to get it to sit level. It's quite a neat system. We just need to press the pin on the ends in with a flat face of a screwdriver to disengage it. Then, turn the preload widget with some pliers. You might be able to get a spanner in there, but you might find it a bit of a tight fit. It's pretty straightforward. It only gets tricky when you try and move it by one notch. I still like it though. It's just so different from the modern coilover preload spacers or threaded bodies. One more for today, I think. Step 18. For this, we'll be needing the front skid plate, the bumper, three nylocks, a few assorted M3 screws, and two washers. The plate sits over the bottom of the front assembly. On the rear edge, there's two short M3 countersunk screws. Do them up just so they're not going to fall out. At the front, there's a long M3 countersunk, which needs an M3 nylock. It's a bit of a fiddle to get in there with a cross wrench, but it's quite doable. Might be easier with a pair of parallel jawed pliers. Do it up nice and tight, and then tighten up the other two screws too. 
The bumper fits to the front lip with the last two screws. The screw heads go on the plastic side with the washer and the nylock goes on the back. I would suggest extra washers under all the nuts on this step, but I reckon I'll be modifying the skid to remove the bumper anyway, as it's just a little bit ugly. Great if you tend to climb with trees a lot though, or maybe for younger drivers who still consider the steering to be optional. Well, there we go then, one rolling chassis, and I think it does look rather good with all that metal on show. I like it. Next time we'll install the electronics and see how the chassis runs. It will be a good chance to see how it goes with the stock motor, and if we need to install something with a few more turns. Until then though, thanks for watching, like if you liked, and if you're not already, don't forget to subscribe. Bye guys!